Okay, it is uh, five o'clock. Uh, let me call to order this uh, special meeting of the Northampton License Commission. Um, uh, only myself and Commissioner Campadelli are here. Commissioner Real is absent. Um, we are uh, recording this meeting, and uh, the business uh, tonight is just to hear presentations from three of the applicants for the um, available seasonal all alcohol restaurant license number 09000043. And I will hear first, uh, we will hear first from um, the applicant uh, from Traden's Bar and Grill, uh, Mr. Jenkins. Is Mr. Jenkins here? Yes. Oh, please step forward. How are you? Very good. So, just for the record, you're Landon Jenkins? Yes. And um, uh, the format we wanted to follow here was just to let uh, the applicants present uh, their plans for the use of the license, what sort of business uh, they have, uh, some essentials of their business plan, what sort of establishment they want to operate, and um, how they would guarantee that the service of alcohol would um, uh, not uh, uh, bring any detriment to the community, and also how their overall uh, plans for their establishment might help our community. So we uh, rarely have the occasion when we have a license like this that's open for uh, many applicants, so we'd like to hear uh, on how uh, your application would um, be in the interests of the community we're thinking. So, Mr. Jenkins, you're on with me. <coughs> Good afternoon, my name is Landon Dinkins and I represent Trading's Barn Group. First, I'd like to commend the Commission for making this license available. Secondly, I would like to thank you for the opportunity to make my pitch on why I believe Trading should be awarded this license. Opening Trading's in Northampton is literally a 20-year dream of mine. I have a passion for the city and the restaurant business in general. I feel that Trading's unique and festive vibe is a perfect fit for Northampton and that it will infuse new energy into the city's nightlife. I also feel that trading will be filling a niche by providing a fun yet mature ambiance for the baby boomers and the 30, 40 something crowd. I'm extremely enthusiastic about the prospect of purchasing and revitalizing the historic Cathy Diner location. The purchasing of the real estate is a testament to my long term commitment to the city. The exterior of the diner will be transformed into an inviting and charming facade that reflects the atmosphere you can expect to find inside. The interior will showcase Tiffany Lamp eclectic memorabilia, and a 30-foot mahogany bar. A fresco dining will be offered during the warmer months. The pub style restaurant will be open seven nights a week for dinner with lunch on the weekends, and the bar will remain open nightly after the kitchen close, closes. An all, an all alcohol license is essential for the trader's business model because of our extensive cocktail menu, weekly drink special, and year-round promotions and celebrations. At Trader's, we take the sale of alcohol very seriously. I am conscious of the enormous moral and social responsibility that comes with holding such a license. I have held an all-alcohol license before in neighboring East Hampton for seven years and had an excellent track record. In closing, by awarding trading with this license, the city will not only be gaining a new business, but a business owner who will always be appreciative and mindful of the incredible opportunity afforded to him by this city. I can assure you that trading will always represent the city of Northampton with the utmost integrity. Thank you. Do you have any questions? No, I've heard this plan. Okay. Um, I just have a question about the diner yes. there. Um, that's been there a while. Yes. That, that whole structure. Right. And um, it's, I don't know that it's been renovated or anything like that. How, how is the thing holding up? Are you, you say you're going to put on a new facade? Yes, well, right it's now. It's going to be a diner, look like a diner car? Um. Kind of. It's, 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 we're going to keep uh, kind of its, um, its unique charm. We're going to try to keep as much of that possible. But right now, the uh, owner of the property, he's doing a lot of renovations. And I will take over the, re the um, more renovations. The, um, but structurally, the thing is sound. The, it definitely, the, and it will be. This, the structure itself will be your core. Yes. There. And you have, um, uh, 
how many square feet do you envision? It's, uh, for it's the about service? I think fifteen hundred. Uh, yeah. So a rather small place. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a small, cozy, uh, intimate place. Yeah. Okay. And um, so the diner configuration itself will be preserved. Yes, that that part. part yes, and that's that's me mostly like the um, the dining room, and like I I also included my business plan, a floor plan of the property. And the back of it will have the bar area. It'll be a separate area for the bar. Okay. And like I said, it's still a small little area. Right. And uh, let me just take a look at that. Uh, let me just note that we got back your um, notices to abutters, and we didn't hear anything from any abutters no. there. Okay. Um, so. Um, and I have a copy of my floor plan if you need it. Is it, is it in here? Or? It should be, but I, I have an additional copy. I see, yes. okay. Good. How many seats are you having? I'm thinking about 65. And a bar? Yes. Mm -hmm. And you said warmer months will be outdoor? Yes, the warm ones we have alfresco dining, and I spoke with the Department of Public Works, and um, that's approved. It's private property, so I don't need I don't need a permit for that. And there's enough room for it. Yes. Yeah. And you said uh, looks like there's uh, possible entertainment as well. Yes, but entertainment is going to be very limited, and I'm talking about like an acoustic duo at the most. Yeah. yeah that's true. So your basement is pretty extensive, and that's where you prepare food. And well, look, I'm gonna. I might try to work with um, just preparing all the food in, a, in the kitchen in the same area. I mean, but if I have to, I will put like a little prep area in, a kit, in the basement. Oh, I see. But I'm going to try to avoid that. It, it, that was initially my intention, but I'm going to try to avoid that. All right. I, I'm not sure that it's material to us, but I'm just curious. Um, I didn't know the place had a basement. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, so, um, do you have any other questions about the, the joint mm -hmm. itself? Uh, just a question about trades in East Hampton. Yes. I, I had eaten there a few okay. times. Uh, why did you close? Well, it was um, it was a very tough decision, and business was good, but it, you know, after seven plus years, it wasn't great. And me and my wife at the time, you know, was going through a recession and all that. And I'm not blaming the recession or anything on that. But we said, would East Hampton ever be as busy as North Hampton? And we like, no. Mm -hmm. And it was a leap of faith to actually close, and it was a very tough decision to close. Sure. When did you close again? Um, January 2010. I see. All right. And we, we have everything that uh, we had specified in the... We have everything that we could the, expect uh, at this point. That wasn't really a request for proposals, but it served as that, so we got everything from this year. Yeah, there's a, a couple things that we couldn't do until we actually came out that. Right, right, yeah, 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 of course. Sure. Okay. Um, and, um, okay. And uh, we received no, uh, uh, no uh, concerns from any abutters to your plan here, yeah, so. Um, Okay, well, uh, we have no further questions. Um, I should, probably should have announced this at the beginning, but um, we have a um, process here. We, we did put this, uh, put this out earlier. We're going to be hearing from all the folks who have applied, um, and then we will decide if there are any who would not meet our criteria of, uh, of adding to the community and uh, also was uh, serving the public interest and guaranteeing that there's no detriment to public safety. We would eliminate people who didn't meet any of those qualifications and then the remaining qualified applicants uh, will um, essentially be put into um, a lottery. We will, we will pull a successful applicant from, from that. So we realize this is unusual, but um, this is what we had decided to do in this case. So. Um, Obviously, we'll be deliberating later on. We'll be hearing from your fellow applicants, and then, um, and then making a decision, 
you know, who is qualified, and then from that point, we'll be making it, we'll, we'll, we'll draw the name of whoever gets this license. So thank you for the time you put into right. this. And also, and I have to submit, sorry. my presentation is a copy of what Altman for. Okay, yeah, sure. Sorry, anything else? No, I just wanted to mention that we had said that October 1st that we were going to deliberate. Okay. <laughs> Here what you said. October 1st uh, is when we will deliberate on this. All right. Uh, we have uh, next, we will hear from um, uh, the uh, Olive Juice Company Incorporated, DBA Bistro Le Gras. And um, we will hear the proposed manager it will be Daniel Martinez. And if you could identify yourself for the record, are you Daniel Martinez? I am Daniel Martinez. Okay. Can I just do one thing first? I'm not sure when you want to bring this up, but we have about a few minutes in the next All right. Um, and you guys, uh, some bullet points? Uh, sure. I'm Daniel Martinez. Um, I'm here to present the Easter Lake Raw's application uh, for the full liquor license. Um, you have a full bullet, few bullet points and supporting information that goes along with what I'm going to say. Um, I think it's safe to say that the most obvious reason we're all here is because the addition of a full liquor license to our business will provide stability and promote faster and stronger growth. Uh, when we first conceptualized the Easter Lake Raw, before we fully understood liquor laws in Northampton and Massachusetts, Offering a complete dining experience was an integral part of the business plan, as was with most fine dining establishments. Um, by complete dining experience, I mean providing the option for aperitifs, cocktails, and after dinner drinks. This license will help round out our business and provide that complete dining experience for our customers, creating a stronger bistro like Raw. We feel that most of the current licenses in operation are located in one congested area of downtown. In our area of town, where we're located, we're the only current option for dinner. However, our end of town is expanding and growing quickly with new housing developments, commercial businesses, and real estate. There is a real desire by the people living and working in our immediate vicinity for both the food and drink we already offer and for an expanded selection of beverages. Since our opening six years ago, we have heard the request for liquor from both tourists and maybe more importantly, locals. We firmly believe that growth in our end of town would benefit Beast Charlie Gras by granting this license. The Northampton community is relying on the stability and growth of three major areas. Tourism, small business, and the five surrounding colleges. Beast Charlie Gras is a major destination for all of these. Our dining room is consistently frequented and supported by local business owners, as well as being a meeting area for faculty from all the five colleges. Our dining room, I'm sorry. Uh, College faculty not only enjoy dining with us on a personal level, but we're often looked to for special events, such as meetings, provosts, and board events, and entertaining prospective faculty and special guests. Tourism in Northampton is obviously very important for the local economy, and Bistro Le Gras is becoming a tourist destination in its own right. We're the first and barely highly recommended restaurant in town by both local businesses and the area hotels and concierge. Awareness and recognition of Bistro Le Gras outside of Northampton is also growing quickly and strongly, especially in markets such as Boston and New York. We are the special occasion restaurant for local residents, visiting families, and alumni of five colleges. The support shown to us by local business is very important to us. It's also something very important for us to do, and we do that very well. We work very closely with CESA, Community Involved in Sustaining Agriculture, um, and we take great pride in how much we give back to the community. We use more local produce, meat, dairy, et cetera, than any other restaurant in Northampton. And while we source from the large, well-established farms, we are even more focused on working with the small growing farms. We love nothing more than seeing young farms get underway and doing our best to help them succeed. Every year, we're able to source more and more product from Western Mass. Last year, 86% of our food purchases for the entire year came from local sources. We are actively putting our money back into the very community that supports us. On a compliance issue level, we've never had any issues. We're quick to do what's requested by building and fire inspections and health inspections. We take alcohol very seriously and have a very well-trained staff. Our restaurant demographic does not have us concerned with underage drinking. 
and the addition of this full liquor license will not change that. We are not a club or a bar. We're a restaurant that would respectfully use liquor as enjoyment for guests. A minor remodeling and reorganization of our bar area is all that is needed for us to serve liquor, and this means we'll be able to quickly put it into use. This license is very important to our original concept, and now that it's available, it's very important to the growth of our business. It's something that will round out our business, not change it. We are located in an area that is devoid of this service, but many residents, that has many residents and is quickly growing. Bistro Le Gras is a well-established, award-winning restaurant that is an excellent draw for tourists. We are well known for our support of the local agriculture, small farms, business, and community. There's no better way for Northampton to show its support of the community than by awarding this license to a restaurant that supports and gives back as we do. Bistro Le Gras is an exceptional candidate. So you are um, not expanding uh, the existing restaurant footprint, you're not going into the next building or knocking down a wall or anything like that, you're going to be still within your existing envelope then? Yes. And um, you keep sort of the same hours that you keep now, or do you expand your hours? We would probably expand our hours because we have recently shortened our hours to Wednesday through Saturday. Um, but with being able to have full service, we'll probably go back to our old set. And um, let's see. Um, you have a lease already with Smith College mm -hmm. for the building. That's correct. Right. So um, that's in good order and everything I see here. Right. And um, you have. Um, uh, you have no great uh, bank loan that you need to take out or pledge a license if you uh, if you got the license and had to make the modifications you say you would do you have any great need for a bank uh, no. uh, pledge or anything like that pledge of license no uh, let me just add this is not just for you but for for everyone it, we no one who um, Everyone who applies for this license is understood to be um, you know, wanting to make certain change to the business. Some people more than others. Obviously, the previous applicant has to renovate this diner and start a new restaurant in Northampton, whereas you have an existing one. But we're not going to um, hold that against any applicant. We understand that uh, some won't be able to get the necessary bank. Uh, loans or anything until they actually are awarded the license and then they would see if they can um, uh, complete their deal with the, uh, with the lending institution that's going to underwrite their renovations. Uh, and obviously people would have time to complete that thing. For some reason the successful applicant who again will be drawn by, um, uh, by lottery uh, is unable to swing their uh, financial backing for the, their plans, um, we would have a certain interval, and we will discuss that at our October 1st meeting, to, um, for them to complete their plans and be able to put the license in operation. If they can't, for some reason, get their bank financing together, and they can't do the thing, then they, we'd have to reopen the process. I'm just saying that not so much for you, because you, you're not facing that, but uh, just for the record and for for all applicants. So forgive me for taking time from your uh, your presentation just to point that out. Sure. It's a, no problem. It just occurred to me as you were uh, outlining your, uh, your project here. Um, okay, and did we um, have to send out 16C notices in this case? Smith College is right there, correct? Oh, yes, but I think What's that? I figured we'd do that on October 1st. Okay, but I mean, we didn't get anything back from the letters. So. No, we got nothing back from the okay. okay, thank you. Thank you.
all records, loan agreements, documents, as well as affidavits containing sources of money uh, for this license transaction. Um, we would hold that in abeyance since the, they've been able to uh, uh, complete that after awarding it the license. Okay, the next uh, would be uh, OCBT Incorporated doing business as Sierra Grill. I uh, have a manager of Brian. That's me, O'Brien C. Tomlin. Let's have a couple sample menus. Okay. Trying to make us hungry, are you? Yeah, no, it's food and drink menu. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. My name is O'Brien C. Tomlin. Uh, you know, dropped most of it except for the OB lately. Um, just to give you a little background on myself, I uh, received, I was thinking about it, I received my first uh, manager of record license when I was um, 19 years old at the University of Maine. I ran a small bar there for them as part of my off-campus board student government. Um, I was allowed to hire bartenders. I, I uh, didn't drink, obviously, but that's uh, where my uh, uh, bar experience came from. First restaurant job was at age 16. Before that, I'm now almost 47 years old. Um, I had uh, four years of fine dining on the coast of Maine, where we uh, the restaurant was uh, one of the first spyglass wine menus that I'd ever seen. This was in the early 90s, and uh, but we also had a very uh, classic cocktail list there as well. A lot of people think of me as a beer bar owner because of the success of Sierra Grill, and um, I've worked in uh, I was a manager, a floor manager, five nights a week at Amherst Brewing Company for six years. Uh, I did the uh, Thursday night and uh, all the way Sunday through Thursday um, and uh, ran that. I, I had door staff, three, four people at a time. We were at capacity about 175 and went up to about 250 people towards the end of my uh, stay there. And then uh, I've been at Sierra Grill now for eight years as manager of record. Uh, we currently serve 24 uh, beers on draft and 35 wines by the glass. Our wine list has been in the top three for the Valley Advocate Readers Poll since we've been open um, consistently, and our beer list is recognized on a state level very highly as well. Um, so uh, what our plans are for this is, uh, since we are a scratch kitchen, uh, we consider ourselves a gastro pub in our minds, but more so uh, not really on paper, uh, but we uh, really embrace the idea of uh, craft everything, craft beer, craft cocktails, Artisanal, even our sodas, we don't carry any Coke or Pepsi. We use only uh, artisanal made small batch sodas from uh, we, one Massachusetts company and from another one in Maine. Uh, we try to really make everything with our own signature upon it and uh, really uh, pay attention to detail. And we're looking to do just a very nice craft cocktail list with some uh, small batch bourbons and uh, single batch uh, whiskeys, uh, non-blended. Um, we uh, will be uh, dedicating some of our kitchen uh, staff to doing some of our prep for our, our base of the liquors that we're going to be using, uh, for our mixers, things like that. We're also going to be working with a company called uh, Ripe, which is brand new out of New Haven, Connecticut, that specializes in fresh squeezed juices, and they're distributing uh, with Bircher Brewing Company, and that's how we'll be receiving those. As far as uh, benefits to the town here, um, we do stay open seven days a week. We serve food from 3 o'clock to midnight seven days a week. Um, and we do, uh, we are one of the latest late night menus in town for people to eat and drink. And that's always been a mantra for us is to eat when you drink and to drink when you eat and uh, kind of pair the two. Uh, we do have a, a fine track record. We have never had an incident. We have had plenty of uh, stings come in and uh, we've always passed. There's never been any issue there, nor have we had any disturbances or anything of, of significance. Uh, due to anything that has occurred inside Sierra Grill. Uh, we've certainly, you yes. know, we have neighbors. Yes. Um, we, um, we, we really feel that uh, Northampton is always thought of as a, as a fantastic food town, and now it's really becoming a, best, a destination for beer lovers, yet we do feel that uh, there uh, are some uh, businesses within this valley that are making better cocktails than anybody in Northampton. And we really like to see that start to happen in Northampton. I mean, there's a, there's a Arcade in Hadley right now that has some of the best uh, cocktails in the state, I would say. They have a fine program at the quarters, and they really have a nice attention to detail there, too. So we really we feel that it's kind of lacking here. Um, we also are surrounded uh, by uh, full liquor license all around, and being the manager there and the owner, I'm there five nights a week, pretty much solid, four to five nights a week. We do have a, a, a significant amount of uh, people that actually come in and in some cases come in, sit down and are seated at a table and then find out we don't have the full liquor and then say sorry and leave. So that does happen to us on a regular basis. In the beginning when we first opened, uh, people definitely said, 
you're not going to make it unless you have full liquor. I don't know what you're thinking. You're crazy. That size were 108 seat, 108 people, 30 in the bar area, about 85 in the back. And uh, I said, well, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna do our best, and we're gonna do the best is what we need, what we have. Um, kind of lost my place here a little bit. Uh, but I feel like uh, you know to mention our demographic, we are a very mixed demographic. We do have a younger clientele, we have a mid-range clientele, and we have an older clientele. Uh, but basically we have a very respectful clientele no matter who they are. And uh, I have a very low turnover with my staff. Uh, all my bartenders are over 30 years old. Uh, they're all uh, very well trained and uh, they, they've been in the business a long time. Uh, about half of them have been bar managers before, so it's, uh, and we keep our employees, so it's uh, very easy to set standards and have people adhere to them. You don't have a rotating uh, staff going through. Uh, we employ right now between 20 and 30 people off and on, um, and that's, like I said, would certainly help with our, um, our, uh, our ability to generate uh, more income to the establishment. We um, we definitely have never had any issues with our uh, you know our, our taxes or our tax base or anything like that. We're always on time with everything. We're always above boards with all the inspections and things that happen, uh, fire inspection to uh, you know spot checks to just about anything, uh, health department things like that. Um, we uh, just to say we also do really feel that you know, by the venue that we're designing here and and, and it, it's a very big attention to detail. And I'm of the school of thought that I, I sort of want to put at the bottom of the menu, if you don't see it, we don't got it, sort of thing. Like, we're going to do these, and this is what we do. And I mean, there's a, a cocktail renaissance that's been going on in the United States for at least the last 10 years that nobody is really capitalizing, and we really want to do that. Uh, we're looking to use, like you see on the list, some really top-notch spirits, some uh, imported bitters, some craft bitters, uh, different adjuncts that we're going to mix with the, uh, the alcohol, uh, even down to different styles of ice for the drinks, uh, from large cubes for if you're getting a, a small batch bourbon or a scotch to uh, crushed ice for a, a, a summertime drink or more just regular ice cubes for other drinks and, and appropriate glassware as well, uh, which will you know, uh, be very significant to the style of the drink and the way it comes. Um, we, we also want to embrace changing the drink list seasonally. We'll have some core drinks, sort of the more golden age of cocktail things, but then as summer rolls around or spring or the winter sort of come around, things shift as far as what we're using and uh, about that. But like I said, we uh, will be serving food with this and uh, we do have our kitchen open until midnight, seven days a week, you know. I think I got it. <laughs> so you you said uh, pretty much you're gonna do the uh, if it's not on the menu, you don't do it. Well, that's not that's just an idea. Yeah, we'll we'll uh, we're not gonna have a a well so to speak. We'll have some uh, cultured cocktails, so to speak, you know. And uh, right now that's gonna appear. You're probably gonna be looking at an eight and a half by eleven sheet with uh, about a dozen cocktails listed at the top. Of course, if you do have the ingredients and somebody wants something, we can mix it, but we're not. Our bar is a, is a 1947 vintage bar. We do 35 wines by the glass. We're gonna probably trim that down to allow a little bit of extra space for us, but I'm not gonna put a blender in the bar. We don't have any television sets right now as it is, so we're very, we really want it to be about the food and the drink and the conversation with the people there. So uh, we're not gonna do the, you know, kamikaze shots. We're not gonna, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah all that stuff. Yeah. Different varieties. Of yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, but also some nice house drinks, things like that. I just mean uh, we just don't want to get into the, uh, you know, can you make me, you know, it's like, no, this is it. There's brown drinks, there's white drinks, there's smoky drinks, there's this drink, you know, and they're going to change seasonally too, which will be fun for us and keep things fresh, so. Do you have any renovations that you have to do? I missed that. Said, yes, no, I mean, honestly, we may hang a few glass racks to lift up some of the wine glasses off the back bar to allow a little bit extra space. But we're, we're you know, the style of mixers we're going to use, uh, we cut our soda guns out of there 10 years ago, so we're not going to have any, any soda guns or anything. But that's about it. We're not, you know, uh, I think that would be, and maybe a shelf or two on the back bar, but no structural re renovations, no change of egress, nothing, you know. You said your seating's 108? That's our fire code seating, yep. Yeah. And if you heard me, the 30 and the 85 adds up a little differently, yeah. but that's about what it is, you know. Uh, you know, and it never gets to the point of uh, 
being uh, congested or, or that sort of thing, you know. But we do do, last weekend we did about 500 uh, people for dinner over the course of uh, Friday and Saturday night. So we move a lot of food through there, you know. Not to say they don't sell a decent amount of beer and wine too, but we do, we do sell a lot of food. And going till midnight, we've, uh, we definitely see a little push sometimes at, you know, like last Saturday we had a couple larger tables come in and, and it's nice, you know, it's, it's scratch food, salads, mussels, paninis, all sorts of stuff till late. So that's, that helps, you know. Somebody had said that you were the latest the restaurant, the latest restaurant in Northampton. That, that is the place where you go the latest in the evening, sit down and expect to get dinner. Um, dinner, yeah, dinner on the weekends till 10.30, but honestly, the um, I believe it's Willie's might be open till midnight with their full menu, and I'm not trying to, you know, but uh, we are a scratch kitchen, and I'm not sure what they do in theirs, but we make everything except for the breads that we use, and uh, we make our own ketchup, everything, you know, the sort all the desserts, so we really take a lot of pride in that, so part of our kitchen staff will be responsible for the mixers and some of the bases we're going to use for our drinks, because uh, we're not going to open jugs of stuff and uh, pour it on some. And we'll be a little bit of a higher price point too. We're estimating probably around uh, $10 for, for a craft cocktail. And I think the going rate in the big cities is 12 and above. So right on par with what we do with the beer and the wine. We have some affordable stuff and you know some things that are a little more expensive. Right now I, my beers range uh, from $5 a glass to uh, $10 a glass and you know domestic to imported Belgian, something like that. So something for everybody. And we also offer all our beers in three sizes, so a smaller half pint to a pint to a 20 ounce, just so people can try different things and, you know. Um, I see that you have a lease um, with the people who own the Old Bay State Hotel there. Yep. And, um, uh, it was a five-year lease. This, uh, the document you provided us shows it. Terminated in 2011, subject to renewal. You renewed your lease and yep. for a five-year period. And I have so another five-year option after that too. After that, so yep. um, so you have an option to be in business there at least through uh, what would that be? Uh, 2020. Well, no, 2000. Yeah. <laughs> no, 2021. Yeah, yeah. So six is when we opened. So okay. Yep. And I signed my first lease with a with a Dan, uh, with the Bishop family. Dan, Dan, uh, Dan Bishop was the first owner, and then uh, now it's the. Uh, VA EPD Limited. Or, right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, so, um, I see also that your corporation, you are the sole officer yeah. of, of it. Okay. And um, we have, however, a description of, of any other uh, parties that have significant stakes in your business. Is there any? No, no. We, we were able to, uh, I, I signed a lease with a little bit of a higher rent due to the fact that they had already renovated the business. They renovated the property and the business was in a state of sort of failing. So they had condoed all those properties in that building and decided to put the, the lowest one up. So I sort of took it on with a more expensive rent but with a very low startup uh, because everything was mostly in place. No, I, I'm I, sorry, my question had to do with uh, just your, do you have any other partners? Oh, no, no, not at all. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, no, no, nobody. Nobody. Yeah. So <laughs> Yeah. So officer of OCVT. Yeah, OBCT. It's my initials. Oh, right, okay. OBCT yeah. and, uh, okay. Yeah. We go all day. It's good and it's bad. <laughs> we get everything. So if the board needed to vote on this, you would vote yes, I take it. Yes, I did include that as well, too, the, the application process, yeah. All right, oh, it's in here, okay. Yeah. Okay. And we have the uh, responses from your butters as well. Yep. Um, and uh, we received no replies to that, so. Um, any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Presentation. Okay, we have, um, again, we have this, unusual process here where we will hear some more applicants tomorrow. Um, we will do it in the way we announced. At this time though, uh, this is a public hearing. Uh, anybody who wants to uh, comment on any of these applications uh, who hasn't already spoken uh, may do so. Anybody who wants to support or object any particular application 
No? Okay, hearing none then. Um, well, we did receive one letter um, uh, in support of uh, Bistro Le Gras. I won't read the whole thing, but um, uh, we were encouraged to award the uh, license to Bistro Le Gras, and um, they show a commitment to excellence in food and the culture they promote. So she has no vested interest in who's awarded the license besides her residents, and she wishes them well. Um, and that came from Isabel McMahon of Wright Avenue. Anybody else want to comment on any of these applications? Okay, hearing none then, let me just reiterate, uh, we will hear tomorrow from um, Hinge, Ibiza Tapas, uh, Local Burger, and Sylvester's. And uh, then we will close uh, the public hearing and we will then deliberate at a further meeting on October 1st, at which time we will decide who among these seven applicants is qualified uh, to go into the pool, and then we will draw uh, one person who will, um, uh, one, one, uh, one organization that will be awarded the license. That person will be given a certain amount of time in order to complete the renovations, get their bank financing in order if they need such, and all that, a reasonable amount of time will be granted. But we would expect the license to be put in operation within that reasonable time frame. Also, too, let me reiterate what we said earlier, is that anybody getting this license will be expected to convert it. This is a seasonal license, as you all know. Um, you'll be expected to convert it to uh, an annual license under the provisions of the special act uh, governing the seasonal local licenses in, in Northampton and to do that within a reasonable period of time as well. So, um, is there anything else that we have missed at this point for hearing these applicants? That, okay. um, as long as we're in open media, are there any questions about the process? I feel that, again, this is unusual, so I just want to be as helpful as possible. Any other questions for anybody here today about how this goes? Hi, I'm Mo McGinnis from Sylvester's. Uh -huh. And my question is, you're going to select somebody from the lottery. Yes. What will you do if that person that you select can't follow through with all the commitments within a period of time? Do you pick a second backup runner-up, or how we does that determine that. That's a very good question. We have a... Um, we, again, we have an unusual circumstance here. I said we would reopen the process, and we'll deliberate as a commission uh, when the three of us are here, I, I assume, uh, to see exactly how we would proceed. Would we hear everybody again to see if their plans have changed, or will we just take the remaining? If we, obviously, if one person is awarded by lottery this license out of the seven, and then they can't get the bank deal or something falls through, then we re reopen the process in a way to be determined. Um, do you have any thoughts on that, Brian? Yeah, so, couldn't say. I, I imagine we'd reopen somehow, and the remaining six applicants would obviously be the ones that would then be under consideration. I don't know that we would reopen it to new applicants, depending on the time frame, but we'll try to do whatever is reasonable and doesn't um, you know, assuming that the whatever time period has elapsed hasn't um, confounded the plans of people like you or others who were thinking they get this, maybe they'll have moved on or something like that. We'd have to see at the time. Okay. Anyone else have a question about this? Okay. All right. Well, uh, that concludes. Uh, our business for today. Uh, is there any other business? Any other new business? Uh, okay. Thanks for coming. Thank you guys. And uh, we'll be adjourned.